Over, go to commercial. Tuttle's Discount Furniture Mart offers everything from knotty pine to nog hide. Keep in mind that it takes at least 20 nogs to make one hide. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? <laughs> uh, and it takes a heap of Tuttle's tables to make a house a home. Jingle. Hi, Ruby. Hi. Hi. Did you come by to see your dad? Mm. How's school? Okay. Kids picking up your personality. How'd you like a date with a harpoon? <laughs> Commercial tag. So if your home isn't becoming to you, you should be coming to Tuttle's. Line three, Lair. Hi, you're on the air with Lair. Uh, yeah, Larry, this is Joe from Carl's Bait Shop. Uh, <laughs> now that you've been up here for a while, buddy, uh, how do you like this Portland area of ours? Oh, uh, hey, Joe, uh, we, we love uh, Portland. Uh, the kids have just started school here, and uh, we've taken some trips, and it's beautiful. And hey, wait a minute. It just so happens that my uh, daughter, Ruthie, is in the studio. Uh, Ruthie, uh, tell Joe how you like Portland. It stinks. <laughs> it stinks. Ruthie, we're on the air. What does she mean, stinks? Uh, well, Joe, uh, she's just underplaying the rave a little bit. Uh, Actually, you see, we're from Southern California, and until we got up here... I suppose she hates her new school, too. Uh, no, she, she just loves it. And uh, thanks for the call, Joe. We've got others waiting. You are out of your bird. Yeah, well, same to you, fish bait. Oopsie-daisy, I pushed the wrong button. We'll take a commercial break. Well, Miss Mouth, now I'm going to get three million hate letters and a couple of postcards that tick. <laughs> Ruthie, you're weird. You know that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Honey, uh, what's the matter? I just wanted to take off the hair, Dad. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that better? Now, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Ruthie, look at me. See the parent. See the parent getting bugged. See the child standing there being dumb. See the child start talking to the parent real quick or the parent will harm the child. Can't we talk about it at home? Larry, the mayor's on the phone. He says, Portland's fine, your program stinks. It's the mayor. Thanks a lot. We'll talk about this at home. Hi, your mayorness. I guess you just heard my little daughter's mouth going 60 in the no-talking zone. I don't know why I'm doing this dumb homework. I'm never going back to that dumb school again anyway. Don't hassle me. You're the one who went all the way down to the radio station and didn't even talk to him. Well, Dad gets so touchy when he's on the dumb air. I'm going in our dumb room and I'm never coming out for the rest of my life. Call me when dinner's ready. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Diane. Boy, what a day. I'll tell you. Between your mayor and your sister, I am ready for the banana cart. By the way, where is Miss Portland Stinks? Who? Your sister, El Malfo. Oh. In our dumb room. 
tell you. Trying to be both father and mother is like trying to play pickup sticks in an STP can. <laughs> Just about the time I think I got the hang of motherhood, I start to flunk fatherhood. What do you want for dinner? Bologna sandwiches or veal scallopini? Veal scallopini. Okay, but I'll have to make it with bologna. Fine. Listen, what's wrong with Ruthie? What did she say? Veal scallopini with bologna? <laughs> Don't look at me. If you and Mom hadn't split up, we'd have better meals. Oh, 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 oh. I knew it would turn out to be my fault. <laughs> I wouldn't go in a room, Dad. Hey, it's okay, honey. I've been working out at the Y. I can take her. <laughs> but if you go in there like it's real heavy, her head will go weird, and she won't be able to get it out. Her head will go weird? Sure. If you don't go in, she's got to come out to find out why you didn't go in. And that makes it so she has to get her acting gear because you didn't start a big deal before she was ready. Only she'll be ready if she comes out. I think my head just went weird. I was just saying... Honey, don't, don't... Don't, don't try to repeat it. Your tongue will get a four-pound hernia. How about peanut butter sandwiches? The bologna's turned green. <laughs> Whatever. Ruthie, come out here. Ruthie Alder, this is the warden speaking. We have the whole cell block surrounded. Come out with your hands up. Dad, do you have to make a joke about everything? This isn't funny. Wait a minute. Is, is this one of those girl things that I'm going to have to read a book about? <laughs> It would be quicker just to punch her out, Dad. Was she adopted? Can we trade her look, in? Would you come on, girls? No, look, what is it? What is eating you? School. It's the pits. Okay, what's so pitsy about it? Well, nobody likes me. Back in Los Angeles, everybody loved me. How come out here nobody wants to be friends with such a neat, terrific kid like me? Maybe you're too modest. I am. Honey, is that what the problem is? You're having trouble making friends at school? Yeah, I guess. Well, oh, come on, honey. Being the new kid in school is murder. It's not easy making friends in a new school. You want me to open that? No, I can handle it. Hey, sis, cheer up. You'll make friends. Sure. If not today, tomorrow. Right. If not tomorrow, next week. You got it. If not next week, maybe next month. <laughs> next year. Why don't you just go cook your little green bologna? <laughs> okay, but nobody cares about my problems. I'm going to be a mother. <laughs> You're gonna be a what? A mother. I have to adopt some dumb freshman and show him around school. <laughs> I'm a netflix. I'm gonna need Grecian formula before dinner. <laughs> Look. Sweetheart, when a new kid shows up at school, they become a target. I remember this kid back in Bloomington, Illinois, a real dumbo. Showed up at school in this $9 suit with the knickers and the high tops. And he's wearing this dippity doo bow tie that glows in the dark, and he's carrying a cardboard briefcase with a picture of Tom Mix on it. I mean, this guy is a real dodo bird. So, what did you do, Dad? I got rid of the briefcase. Corny? Come on, you guys. Oh, come on, Ruthie. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to light things up a little. After all, I never expected to have personality problems with you. I mean, you're the cheerleader around here, the life of the party. It's Diane who never has it, who's the one who's... who's who cooks great green bologna. Come in, Earl. I dream of wieners with a light toasted buns. Have a look. Like a small planet with a little chimney. Thank you. I was just making myself a hot turkey sandwich and I'm out of a couple of things. So what do you need? Pinch of salt, cup of flour, and a hot turkey. Earl, what did you really come down here for? Okay, okay. I was upstairs sitting in my apartment worried about Ruthie. Nobody gave me a call, nobody gave me a thought, and I could die of curiosity. Okay, she's just having a little trouble making friends at school. Oh, hey, Ruthie. Ruthie, I know how it is, believe me. 
I was rejected by everyone right to high school. Then I found the secret. Well, what was it? I sat on him until I yelled, friend! <laughs> uh, this letter came for you today, Ruthie. You got it in my mailbox by mistake. Oh, it's just a party invitation. A party invitation? What are you tearing it up for? Well, it's just for grouchy Olivia Newton. Olivia Newton John? No John. No John. No wonder she's grouchy. <laughs> Would you mind? Ruthie, you wanted to make friends and you tear up a party invitation. She got the invitation by mistake. Olivia My asked... story, do you mind if I tell it? First, Olivia invited me to a party. And then she changed her mind. So she told me when I got the invitation to tear it up. Ruthie, there's something going on here that you're not telling me. I don't want to talk about it, Dad. Excuse me. <laughs> Look, kid, if you want to tell your Uncle Earl about it, I promise not to tell him. Earl, would you do me a favor? Would you go spin off into another orbit? <laughs> okay, okay, reject it again. Does this mean we're not friends? Yes. I'll sit on you. Well, okay, we're friends again. Just go, huh? It always works. <laughs> All right, Ruby. It's level with the old man time. Well, let's just forget it, huh? Maybe I'm being punished for something I did. Well, it can't be that. She's not even sexually active yet. <laughs> sexually active? Diane, I don't care how progressive it is, I hate that kind of talk. Well, then how come you always use it on your dumb show? What? I mean, what does my dumb sh what does my show have to do with this? <laughs> Nothing. Just forget it, okay? Nothing. Just forget it, okay? <laughs> forget it? How can I forget what I don't even know what it is I'm supposed to forget? So let's just forget forgetting it, okay? Okay, if you must know, Dad. Olivia's mother thinks you're a filthy, dirty person. A what? A filthy, dirty person. I heard, I heard. <laughs> Wait a minute, you mean you don't have friends at school because of me? Well, it's not your fault, Dad, it's mine. See, all the kids were bragging about their dads, and I kind of bragged about you. How you had your own show, and how you were big in Hollywood, and how you kissed Farrah Fawcett. He did? He said he did. <laughs> I just said that to make your mother mad. Must have worked. She left me. <laughs> anyway, Olivia told her mother about you, and she listened to your show, and she said, Who needs Hollywood people coming to Portland and letting all their smut hang out? Then she put you on the rotten list at the PTA. You knew about this? Dad, I didn't want to tell you. Oh, thanks a bunch. I think Mrs. Newton is just anti-sex. Oh, yeah? Well, how did Olivia get here? By Amtrak? <laughs> hey, uh, do you guys feel the same way about my show? Of course not. It was boring, maybe. But not dirty. <laughs> well, maybe I get a little spicy now and then, but I mean, don't they hear the rest of the show? I, I, I talk about ecology, I'm into whales, I'm all for the big bald eagles. I mean, I'm talking your basic Pat Boone here. Dad, we know you're great, but Olivia's mother thinks you do nothing but take phone calls from heavy breathing Harry and Frank the Flasher. Boy, this steams me. I gotta tell you, this really steams me. Ruthie, I, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to bring that Olivia and anybody else that wants to come down to watch me do my show because we are going to change some thinking around here. Nobody's going to hassle my kid. Trust me. <laughs> While you're trusting me, please call the doctor. I may have broken my hand. <laughs> Nice suit. Who died? <laughs> Look, I'm expecting some guests. So get rid of the stupid darts and then take down that porno calendar, comb your hair, and do something about your stomach. Gladly. Touch those cookies and you lose a hand right up to your chubby little shoulder. Touchy, touchy. Who's coming? Ruthie and some kids from school, including Olivia No John Newton. Aha, uh -huh. so that's why you dress like my plumber. Look, Earl, I'm deadly serious about this. Now, Olivia's mother thinks that I run a dirty, filthy show. She noticed, huh? <laughs> this is important, Earl. I don't want Ruthie being embarrassed by a ding-dong father or his ding-dong friend. 
Ding dong. Watch it. I report you to the Union Insult Committee, of which I happen to be the head ding dong. <laughs> well, that's just swell. Now, where is Morgan? At the doctor. I think she woke up this morning feeling pleasant, and it scared her. <laughs> Boy. All right, Earl, look, you're going to have to screen the calls. Okay. Very hard to sound dignified when you're talking to a lady congressman who used to be a hooker. <laughs> I bet she took a cut in salary. <laughs> Earl, will you stop babbling and get busy? Oh, uh, Earl, and if I should just happen to get an important, intelligent call, uh, say, like, uh, having to do with the 1947 Oxford-Cambridge boat race, uh, just zip that thing right through. Also, I want you to call me Mr. Alder. <laughs> it has more class. Very well, Mr. Alder. As you wish, Mr. Alder. <laughs> By your leave, Mr. Alder. I'd like to break your face, Mr. Alder. <laughs> I should have stayed with the ballet. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart, you gotta hide. Sesame Street's coming. Hi. Uh, hi. I was just saying goodbye to my Avon lady. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Alder. You see, Phyllis, my mother was right. He is a dirty old man. Olivia, he's not my dad. This is Earl, the engineer. He pushes the buttons. He sure doesn't push mine. Listen, you little person. Now, come along, girls. I'm sure Mr. Alder is ready to receive you if you care to go in. Well, thank you, Your Holiness, and please give my best to the Archbishop. I'm glad you both enjoyed the show. <laughs> Bye. Why, you're here. Dad, this is Debbie, Olivia, and Phyllis. Ladies, welcome. Well, I guess you're pretty excited to be down at a radio station. <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to uh, express your feelings when you're choked up. Are you wearing that suit to impress us? Uh, well, of course. I always like to impress an attractive young lady. If that door is locked, I am going to scream. Five seconds to air, Mr. Alder. Thank you, Earl. Here we go. Take line three, Mr. Alder. Thank you. Good afternoon. You're on the air with Larry Alder. Larry, this is Sally. Well, what would you like to discuss, Sally? Well, what happened to the nice man who had this program before you? Uh, he has a new show in Seattle. Oh, he was terrific. His show was so uplifting, so informative, and so... Well, uh, thanks, and call again, Sally. <laughs> she wasn't finished. Wasn't that kind of rude, Mr. Alder? Yes, I thought she was very rude, Olivia. <laughs> Line two, Mr. Alder. What happened to freedom of speech? Um, Olivia. Uh, Dad, you're on the air. Um. Uh, Larry? Um. Uh, Larry? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, who is this? This is Margaret. I have a bet with somebody. Can you tell me who won the 1947 Oxford-Cambridge boat race? Uh, let me see. Uh, 1947. Um. Uh, Mm, that was March 29th. Um, it's uh, coming to me now. Yes, uh, Cambridge won that race in 23 minutes and one second. And the uh, coxswain's name was uh, Nigel Faversham, who, by the way, is uh, currently managing a house of pies in Duluth, Minnesota. I told my friends you're an intellectual giant. Well, thank you, Margaret. I try to keep informed. Well, Portland's so lucky to have such an era... Era... Erudite. <laughs> yeah, erudite conversationalist. Well, thanks very much, and uh, call again, Diane. I thought her name was Margaret. Oh, it is. You said Diane. Diane Margaret. Ann Margaret? <laughs> Truman Margaret? That's Margaret Truman. Right. Uh, let's take a brief commercial message here. Ruthie... Don't you have a sister named Diane? Uh, we did, but she's in the Peace Corps. <laughs> My mother was right. You take phony phone calls. I do. All right, Mr. Alder. Who won the 1952 Indianapolis 500? Um, Reggie Jackson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mr. Alder, who won Anybody that? want some cookies? No, thanks. My mother said not to eat anything here because they might have dope in it. Diane made those cookies. So that is her name. Well, uh... I think 
think you cheat, Mr. Roger. I do. Well, now, listen here, young lady. And like my mother says, you have a dirty program. I do not. Line three, Reverend Alder. <laughs> Just listen to me one minute. Hi, I you're on the air with Lair. Right, you're on the air with Lair. Hi, Lair. Uh, this is Vince. Uh, we were talking last week about this uh, uh, affair that I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you having it catered, Vince? Uh, you are funny, Lair. You remember I told you she was married and her husband couldn't care less. Oh, Vince, uh, now uh, that kind of conversation disturbs me. I think you people ought to all sit down and talk this out. Examine each other. We examine each other every night. <laughs> well, call again, Vince. <laughs> Silly medical students. You have no morals at all, Olivia. Uh, well, I... Look, I you, uh, you know something? You and your mother have enough morals for all of us. Dad? I'll bet your mother has a blue nose and wears bicycle bloomers. <laughs> hey, fat pants, I thought you were going to screen the calls. I'm making a fool out of myself in there. Larry, you left me with dead air. Well, so what? It's either that or a dead Olivia Newton. <laughs> Please stand by. We're having technical difficulties. I'm going home. My mother said... Olivia, doesn't your father ever say anything? We interrupt this argument for a special news report. Newsroom, take it away. This is the newsroom. What the hell special report are you talking about? <laughs> Just talk. Billy Carter must be up to something. I knew it. Your dad makes up the news, too. He does not. That's another department. My dad's in charge of smut. Ruthie. I don't care, Dad. We were putting on an act this whole time just so I could go to your dumb party. He wrecked his whole radio show just for me. You know what that makes me? A dummy. Because I don't care if I ever talk to you again in my whole life. And my dad is right. Your mother does have a blue nose and bicycle bloomers. Whatever they are. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Hey, babe, uh, how'd you like to move into a cave and live on top of Mount Hood? Dad... I was so dumb to think I wanted her for a friend. Yeah, well, I sure didn't do much to help you, did I? Daddy. Listen, sweetheart. Look, we can only be ourselves, okay? I mean, what I was doing in there, man, that's just not me. I'll tell you what, from now on, people are just going to have to like us the way we are. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lucy? Phyllis. Uh, Olivia's a jerk. Can I ride home on the bus with you? Well, sure. I'll see you at home, Dad. Goodbye, Earl. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye, Phyllis. Bye. <laughs> there. You promise you won't tell the guys down at the Union Hall you saw me crying? <laughs> Take line four, Lair. Hi, you're on the air with Lair. Don't miss Brothers and Sisters. Zipper's no-nonsense dad is headed for campus, and Zipper's fun-loving college career may be over. Then share the excitement of a special 90-minute sweepstakes. An out-of-luck bookie, an out-of-work waitress, and an out-of-money lawyer are this week's finalists in a million-dollar lottery. Herschel Bernardi and Adrian Barbeau star in sweepstakes after Brothers and Sisters tonight on NBC.